Okay, so using the Pythagorean theorem, we write our equation and we get down to x squared equals 25. So now you need to figure out how to solve for the variable. So if I had x squared equals 25, the operation I'm going to use is to isolate the x. I'm going to undo the squared. So if I undo the squared, does everybody know what you do? To get x isolated? Yeah. Take the square root. That's right. So you're going to... You're going to say, I'm going to take the square root, and that's going to like undo. That's the inverse of, of squaring. So I'm going to put this radical over both sides. And now x squared, the square root of x squared, makes the squared and the square root cross each other off. So I'm left with x. And then I'm looking for a number when multiplied by itself makes 25. So what time is itself? Five. Yep. Is there another answer? No, there's not. What is a negative times a negative? Negative five. Negative five. So my solution could be five or negative five. So I'm looking for a number when multiplied by itself makes 25. So either five times five or negative five times negative five. So just to be clear, it's either x equals five or x equals negative 5. But if I go back to the example we had, would it make sense to have a hypotenuse of negative 5? No, because we're on a triangle. So here, if I take the square root of both sides, x equals, I'm just going to take the positive because I'm talking about the side of a triangle. So if you were doing the math and just solving an equation, 5 and negative 5 are possible answers. But a solution to this example is only the positive answer because I'm talking about the length of a triangle. So for this one, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And so z is going to equal, I'm going to leave this as the square root of 200 for right now because there's not a perfect square. There's not a number that's an integer or whole number when multiplied by itself gives you 200. So I'm just going to jump to this one. So if I take the square root of 144 and the square root of y squared, I get y equals 12. Yeah. So it's 12 or negative 12, but I'm going to keep the 12. So now if I have z squared equals 200, and I take the square root of both sides, z equals the square root of 200. What I'm going to do to solve this, I'm going to simplify the radical. So I'm looking for perfect squares. So I'm going to find the factors of 200. So what are some factors of 200? Uh, 2 and 100. 2 and 100, yep. What else? 5. 5 and what? 5 times? 20. 40, I think. 40. Yeah. That's 100. Oh, 5 times, 5 times 20 is 100. Um, okay. Oh, we're doing 200. I thought we were doing yeah. 100. Isn't 5 times 4 20? 10. Yes. 10 and what? 20. 10 and 20. Any others? 4 and 50? 1 and 200. 8 times? 25. 25? Okay, so what you do, you come up with a list of factors, and what you're going to do, you're going to look for the biggest one that is a perfect square. So I know that 100 is a perfect square. I know that 4 is a perfect square. I know that 25 is a perfect square. So for your list of perfect squares, <laughs> perfect squares. So what times what um, equals 1? One. 1 times 1 equals 1. So then 2 times itself is 4. So if I take the square root of 4, 4 is a perfect square because if I take the square root of 4, I get 2. Next would be the square root of 9, I get 3. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. So it would be helpful to know the perfect squares. So the square root of 100 is 10. So out of 100, 4, and 25, 100 is the biggest one. That's a factor of 200. So I could rewrite this as the square root of 2 times the square root of 100. And then what's the square root of 100? 10. So this is equivalent to the square root of 2 times 10. But if you're going to rewrite your answer as a simplified radical, you always put the integer first and the radical last. So I'm just going to rearrange this as 10 square root of 2. So my answer is z equals 10 square root of 2. That would be the simplified answer.